Anyone who wants to tackle corruption must be willing to go all the way. This is a story that reveals the extent to which bribery is endemic in Ghana. It gives you an insight into how some people retain their positions or lose their jobs. This investigative story starts as an everyday corruption in the civil service but ends up, surprisingly, at the doorstep of the very high and mighty. The story tells you why Ghana is struggling with the corruption fight. Because the very people to lead by example are neck deep in it. The practice of sacking political appointees of the previous government is a well-known subculture in the body politics of Ghana. Former government appointees automatically leave office with the president under whom they were appointed. However, the same cannot be said for civil servants or persons who work directly under the Ghana Civil Service. The civil service is a non-partisan institution insulated from partisan influences. In spite of the established neutrality of the civil service, some politicians still find means to influence recruitment, transfers and promotions when their political parties win elections. They go any length to get their preferred people to be moved into positions of authority in order to influence decisions. Such was the case in 2017 when the new patriotic party won the 2016 elections. As usual, the change of government kicked in the obvious and usual jostling for positions. A plot was hatched in 2017 by some contractors, politicians and some staff of the Department of Urban Roads to get the president to sack the director of Urban Roads, Al-Haji Dr. Abbas Awolu. This was revealed in a documentary titled Dirty Deals at Urban Roads top officials exposed in bribery and corruption. The documentary was released by the Salis newspaper on YouTube in July 2017. The Salis newspaper was investigating bribery and corruption within the road sector. The plot to get Al-Haji Abbas kicked out of office was revealed in the course of investigating two officials of the Department of Urban Roads for being in the habit of taking bribes from contractors. Before the undercover story was published on YouTube, the newspaper had earlier in June 2017 published on its front page with a caption, Road Contractors Behind Plot to Remove Urban Roads Director. In that story published on Wednesday, June 7, 2017, the Salish newspaper reported that some road contractors were alleging, among other things, that under al Haji Abbas, only roads in NDC strongholds were given upgrades. They further alleged that al Haji Abbas runs the department as an autocratic leader. The newspaper further stated that former President John Mahama imposed al Haji Abbas on the department with the exit of one Dr. Dakum to the Ministry of Roads. Some of these allegations came up when the Salis was investigating the new job in Municipal Director of Roads, Mr. Francis Tosu, for bribery and corruption. He was of the view that al Haji Abbas had to go because he was a challenge to their deals. He even said that al Haji Abbas was being protected by the Vice President, Dr. Baumia, just like former President Mahama, because of his northern roots. Hmm. <laughs> We are finding a way of getting him out there. Yeah. Because if we don't mind, because he's a man here. 
Mr. Tosu took an amount of 2,000 Ghana cities from the Salis investigators to help them secure contracts. The investigators paid for his lunch as well. Following this story, two petitions were submitted to the local government minister, Hajia Halima Mahama, and the head of the local government service, Dr. Nana Ato Atha, for investigation and action. Both Francis Tosu, the new job in municipal director of roads, and Benjamin Bampu, the Tema Metropolitan Director of Roads, who were caught on tape receiving bribes in separate encounters from the Salis investigators came under criminal investigations by the Ghana Police Service. Watch how a presidential staffer reveals the three big men behind the grand scheme to get the director of urban roads out of office and how a deputy chief of staff is heavily involved. The plan to kick Al Haji Abbas out thickened. Some party communicators and serial callers were unleashed on radio to mount calls on the president to sack Al Haji Abbas. Behind these communicators and serial callers were some contractors and some politicians who were going to be the ultimate beneficiaries. They alleged that Al Haji Abbas was an NDC man and was going to sabotage the NPP in the area of roads. Sometime in 2017, Edmond Che, a presidential staffer, offered to assist Al Haji Abbas by influencing party communicators and also plead with the chief of staff on his behalf so that he is not moved from his position as the director of urban roads. I'm going to start with mom, the father, the brother. If you need a tip, I'm going to go to the mother. I'm going to be angry because you know, I'm going to be a chief. But right now, I also want to close them down. So we'll be going to go to the mother. Yeah. 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 The Salis newspaper got wind of this and went undercover. The first meeting with Edmond Che was at a pub in East Ligon, a suburb of Accra. The meeting was to find out how the presidential staffer was hoping to help stop the agenda to get the director of urban roads out. Edmond Che presented his plan. He talks about how to compromise top journalists and some three big men with money. He lays down a plan in his words to kill the story. What? Yeah. 
I, I want to close all. If it's okay, 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 so we see all the commercials that we have the the ผมสั่งคอลเอ้ยไอ้ไอ้เรื่องนี้มันเฟรนอ่ะเราสิโอ้โหไอ้เรื่องนั้นจริงๆนี่ค่ะแต่ไอ้นั้นมีส่วนที
the 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 Edmond Che told the investigator about how close he is with the chief of staff and one of her deputies. The presidential staffer showed the undercover investigator a video and a picture of the president and a deputy chief of staff, Mr. Asen Sobwache, the NPP parliamentary candidate for Bantama constituency, who were out of the country. Edmond Che said he is an errand boy for the deputy chief of staff and so he listens to him. So, Ah, The Salis investigator expressed worry about Kwame Bafo, aka Abronya DC, who was the lead communicator champion in the agenda. There was a second meeting with the presidential staffer, and this time it was at Golden Tulip Hotel in Accra. The purpose of this meeting was to give a cash amount of 6,000 Ghana cities to the presidential staffer to calm the voices clamoring for the removal of the director of urban roads. Because me didn't know how she wants to rent it, Emma. It will cop me bottom end. Okay. We have five thousand. Yeah, we have five thousand. Yeah. We have five thousand. Edmond Che, a party communicator himself, tells the Salis investigator to advise Al Haji Abbas not to respond to any publication or interview 
because that would make his defense difficult. He goes ahead to indicate how he prevailed on producers at Angel TV not to discuss a Ghanaian observer story that was negative for the director of Urban Roads. In this second meeting, Abronya DC came up again, obviously for his role as the lead advocate champion in the agenda. For the second time, the presidential staffer asked that Abronye should be left for him to handle. He said that was his nature. I'm telling you, come and support you. I'm telling you, come and support you. I'm telling you, The presidential staffer was obviously not satisfied with the amount he was given and requested for more. He said there were other big men involved in the agenda to get Al Haji Abbas out and he needed to sort them out too. He said this could only cater for the communicators. Oh, David, what's up? I'm food and you are The presidential staffer assured was going to get the work done. After this meeting, the attacks on Al Haji Abbas from the party communicators and serial callers on radio even heightened. It became clear that Edmond Che was a fly in the storm and there was the need to see the big man himself. President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekufu Ado. I've said it and I'll repeat it again. Those who are coming to this administration thinking that it's an avenue for making a lot of money are going to be disappointed. They better go to the private sector. That is where people make money, not in government.
anyone who wants to tackle corruption must be willing to go all the way. There are no shortcuts. Ghana has taken a number of encouraging steps over the last 28 years since the beginning of the Fourth Republic to curb corruption. Among many other policy initiatives is the establishment of a Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, SHRAJ. The Commission is charged with investigating all instances of alleged and suspected corruption and the misappropriation of public funds by officials. Following numerous allegations of corruption leveled against some appointees of the S12 NDC administration in 2013, the government then initiated a policy to help appointees avoid situations that would put them in a seeming situation of conflict of interest, hence guarding against corruption. This led to the publication of the Code of Ethics for Government Appointees in 2013. The President, Mr. John Mahama, has spelled out the Code of Ethics for Ministers of State, Deputy Ministers of State and other political appointees. At the core is the call for political appointees to make national interest paramount when conducting government business. The orientation and the manual on Code of Ethics mutually reinforce each other and provide an opportunity for us to sharpen our delivery capabilities by doing what is right and doing things right at the right time and at all times. The Code of Ethics was primarily to be the go-to document to enable officials know and anticipate any situation that could compromise a public official. After initiating this policy, Mr. Mahama himself was subjected to his own standards when in rare instances a certain precedent was alleged to have taken Ford Explorer four-wheel vehicle from a Bokinabe contractor for award of a contract. Um, a complaint was made against me by two individuals and um, charge to charge and charge wrote to me and detailed various issues that they wanted answered. And so to get out my lawyers, we answered those questions. In the run-up to the 2016 election, then-candidate and now President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado, gave the strongest indication that persons who see service in government as an avenue for making money will have no place in his government should he become president. Their proper place, he said, was the private sector. I've said it and I'll repeat it again. Those who are coming to this administration thinking that it's an avenue for making a lot of money are going to be disappointed. They better go to the private sector. That is where people make money, not in government. This statement won the hearts of many and sent a strong challenge to the incumbent president, John Dramani Mahama. In December 2019, President Okufuado, while interacting with the media in the Jubilee House, reiterated his unblemished record for never taking a bribe or being corrupt. He said that was not part of his arrangement. I continue to say that I am not corrupt. I have not been corrupt. I'm not taking any money from anybody to give anybody any contract. It's not part of my arrangement. And uh, I am not provide, presiding over a, a government of family and friends. The promise to fight corruption was the second most important campaign promise by candidate Akufuado, apart from free SHS. I'm disgusted at the cavalier attitudes towards corruption in public life. I believe that the everyday petty and oppressive corrupt practices that blight the lives of men of ordinary Ghanaians will disappear if high government officials are seen to be persons of integrity. That is the quality of governance, a government of integrity I'm offering the people of Ghana. So important was a subject that he promised to bring to the presidency an unblemished record of personal integrity and fortitude. He indicated in the strongest terms the need for the fight against corruption to begin with an incorruptible leader. Adding to the litany of prescriptions to sustain the corruption fight, the new patriotic party promised to fight corruption with a number of proposals. The topmost of them 
was the establishment of the Office of Special Prosecutor to handle all corruption-related matters, including bribery. This has been achieved, albeit with much desired office. The response of the new patriotic party to this demand was inter alia to pledge in his manifesto of the 2016 general elections the establishment of the office of special prosecutor an independent non-partisan body with the relevant professional capability to lead the fight and hold public officials past and present accountable for their stewardship of public finances another attractive idea to fight corruption was when at an iea presidential debate candidate akufuado said he was going to adopt undercover approach to exposing corruption yeah thank you very much you have specifically mentioned corruption within the taxation system what exactly will you do to stem this out the, the measures are going to be difficult, but there have to be a variety of them, a variety of them, uh, including what I, consider, what I, con I, I, I call the ANAS principle, um, setting up highly motivated professional groups of young people who will work, if you like, as it were, undercover to unearth examples of corruption wherever they can find it, and thereby allow the authority to deal with the issue. Because not only do you unearth the corruption, but you actually deal with it in terms of sending people to court, prosecuting them. Hopefully the courts will cooperate and make sure that the offenders are, are, are found guilty and sanctions appropriately enforced. So a variety of measures, but a key one is the NAS principle, as well as, of course, what you do to do to securize those who are in the, in the tax collecting agencies. It is obviously clear the impact all of these sweetheart talks about fighting corruption has had. As it became obviously clear that losing his job was imminent, the director of Urban Roads, Al Haji Dr. Abbas, sent a delegation to see the President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. They were led to the president by Ghana's ambassador to the United States, Dr. A.J. Bewa. In his company were a woman and a man who were introduced as wife and brother of the director of Urban Roads. According to Ambassador J. Bewa, he was leading them on behalf of Madame Amabuzia, president, that the meeting was the first business of the day. <laughs> The meeting was in the private residence of the president in Nima to plead for clemency and to state his side of the allegations being leveled against him by the party communicators and a section of the media. They explained their mission in detail while denying the allegations of partisan leanings against the director of urban roads. The president took notes in his diary while he explained their mission. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm so excited. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited
Nini eh datana kanal da moa. Yes ya o eh mama buji afi. Ah mi tira o video su bia o mo trene ha mi retire fo. Ha. Inti yo excellence. Ana pai ba ya ya ko no bon dia. E ya la ja ba su. Enti se ya nti me na. Amafo hana se ya yin wo office ni na wo ya politics. This was your new politics one office. We are civil servants. On the Bonibia we are hot dance. Then so turn a man for time. I almost say the beginning of the hop. Say Yemra and the power to man. And can you cry a woman to the world? Now the good to get every form. Now turn a man for time. He gave an amount of 40,000 US dollars concealed in a brown envelope on behalf of the director of urban roads to the president. Ambassador Eje Bewa, seeing that the president was writing at the time, took the money from the man and handed it over to the president. President Ekufuado received the money with both hands while beaming with smiles. To put a name on the money, President Okufuado requested to have one. The woman asked her brother whose name to give the president. She spoke in Dagbani. She offered to give her name and spells it out for the president, who gladly writes it out in his diary. Money has changed hands. The atmosphere is now less tensed and familiarity has been established. It is indeed a small world. The new chief no problem after this meeting and a subsequent exchange of forty thousand dollars the incessant calls for the removal of Alhaji Dr. Abbas Awolu from office ceased, and Alhaji Abbas continues to be the director of urban roads to date. At a media encounter in 2018, President Okufuado told journalists that his administration will require watertight evidence of corruption against his appointees before any action can be taken. A lot of allegations in our country, my people in office, many of them when you probe, tend out not to be the case. If we are to go along with all the allegations, we we'll have a plethora of cases many of them the courts would not support. So the statement that I have made, all kinds of allegations have come to my notice and come to the notice of my government, and there are thorough investigations going forward. That I will not accept prosecutions being brought just in order to satisfy the appetite of people that people should be prosecuted. They're going to be brought because they have been well documented, well researched, well documented. There's strong evidence of wrongdoing which a court of law can reliably convict, use to convict people. We provide the unedited video of the meeting between the president, the woman, and Ghana's ambassador to the United States of America. Thank you for your attention. God bless Ghana. God bless Africa. <laughs>